trains are everywhere, just out of sight, and sometimes right in the middle of everything. This train is both. Every morning at dawn, a 30-car Norfolk Southern freight hauls steel and stone, newsprint and lumber, 17 miles from downtown Norfolk to the Virginia Beach oceanfront, and hauls it very slowly. Right now, we run 10 miles an hour. That's the speed restriction on this track. Engineer William Bobbitt concedes even at this speed, their close calls. The commuter, they'll take chances right up until the engine almost enters the crossing. The track parallels one of Virginia's busiest highways. In fact, if there's ever a high-speed light rail commuter train, it would run on this right-of-way. Flagman Bobby Snow has some doubts. But I don't believe it would work good. Why not? Too many road crossings. Yeah, it takes too long because it, if you go fast, you're just going to wipe a few automobiles out. But now this is a freight line, and the crew is busy. Conductor Larry Coker works from a railroad rarity, a red caboose. About 15 feet, 26. So many stops, and you have brake tests you have to get, and you'd have to send a man to the rear in order to check the brakes on the rear, and this way somebody's on the rear all the time. And that helps at the dozens and dozens of crossings. Trainmaster Keith Harris notes there are few complaints from motorists. The train crew, I think, tries to stop and, and leave the crossings open the best they can and block them for no longer time than they can. But uncoupling and positioning freight cars is a time-consuming, tough job. It's quite a bit of physical work, but uh, as long as the weather's fine, it's more than enjoyable. In a trade where seniority is measured in decades, Franklin Art Pelletier, with 16 years, is a rookie and an old-timer both. Although I'm the oldest man on this job, I'm the youngest, as far as railroad experience is concerned. If this ever is a commuter line, you'd ride in air-conditioned and quiet comfort. Somehow, I think this is a lot more fun. By midday, we're within four blocks of the motels of the oceanfront, getting ready to haul 28 empties back to Norfolk. Another day on a railroad that parallels the busy highways of 1990 in more ways than one. From Train 26, Bob West reporting. Railroad cars crossing 26 miles of Chesapeake Bay it happens twice a day, every day, and it began in 1884. Yet almost nobody knows about it. Let's begin where it does. Dawn at the Virginia Beach yard of the Eastern Shore Railroad. The car float from Cape Charles is unloaded, and 26 loaded cars put aboard the 400-foot barge Nandua. In all of East Coast railroading, this is unique. Uh, to my knowledge, our car floats are the largest and handle the longest distance. Stephen Gedney is chief executive officer of the two-county commission that has operated the 96-mile short line since Conrail abandoned it in 1981. The railroad and its car float is still here for a very simple reason. This is the shortest route into the northeast uh, from Norfolk. The Tug Columbia is contracted to make five trips every 48 hours. Captain Willie B. Lewis is master. And kind of pick up time and everything from dock to dock, normally four hours to four, four and a half. Everything depends on the wind and weather. Our best wind on this run is the southwest. That's, that's the best of all. Hundreds of ships cross the mouth of Chesapeake Bay every day, but this tug and barge is the bay's one and only seagoing railroad. Most guys like to get on a boat and you know, stay going like a trip, like four or five days before you get where you're going. But I like this run, I really do. By the time we approach Cape Charles, the Columbia has the Nandua on the hip and almost ready to roll off its coal, chemical, cement, and mixed cargo. 15 feet to the bridge, looking good, Jack. Plus the stern. We got contact on the bridge. The bow needs to go towards the port about a foot and a half. Once docked, Eastern Shore Railroad crews take over to roll off the northbound cars and roll on the south. Doesn't take long for the turnaround, and the Columbia, her captain and crew, make the 26-mile trip 
all over again. Tugboating and railroading, twice a day, every day, for 106 years. The romance of the rails has a very lively history on Chesapeake Bay. Bob West reporting. We're the Chesapeake and Albemarle Railroad Company, and we are a short line. 77 miles short from Norfolk to Edenton, North Carolina. Spun off this spring from Norfolk Southern, Jim Davis is general manager of a brand new railroad. This is the 11th railroad that we have operated. We are a subsidiary of Railtex, headquartered out of San Antonio, Texas. The bulk of the business will be on 47 miles of track between Norfolk and Elizabeth City that includes a railroad oddity, a hand-cranked drawbridge. A man has to operate it from a crank in the middle. He winds around the thing almost 15 times, makes 15 turns on it, and it will slowly, gradually line up for the railroad line. The company began with a leased engine. Two Railtex locomotives were on the way. We'll have uh, Carolina blue background with uh, a red striping with white lettering. Uh, and uh, we'll have brand new Chesapeake and Albemarle engines. We're running alongside the Norfolk Nags Head Highway now, a vacation road for tourists, 40 miles of opportunity for a brand new railroad. We're certainly going to give it a shot. We're here to stay. OK, uh, 4153, let's uh, shove them in here about six cars to a couple, no? While hiring, Railtex employees and other veterans helped out. Bruce Seberg has 40 years as an engineer. The basics, no matter whether you get back to steam engines or how far you get back, well, it's all about the same. These two tanks in the bottom, that tank, that hopper back. Busiest man is Mike Ford, who does a handful of jobs. The conductors work and the brakemans work. and. Uh, Everything's short of the engineering on the train. That's taken care of this day by R.J. McKay, our first engineer with an earring. If you look back far enough in history, I guess you've had all sorts of characters. This may just be coming around again. I, I admit I'm a little different. But... So is the Chesapeake and Albemarle. We're going to be a, a small-time operation with five employees, and we feel like we can do it efficiently and, and, and profitably. Riding into the future with America's newest railroad, I'm Bob West reporting. Passengers lined up at a crossing to flag down a train. Something from 50 years ago, maybe. But this is Lee Hall, Virginia, near Williamsburg. And this is the Amtrak train they call the Colonial. Daily service from Newport News to Washington, New York, and Boston, with Virginia stops in Williamsburg, Richmond, and Fredericksburg. Who's first here on the hip parade? Describing today's Amtrak conductors, friendly is an understatement. Tickets, please. Tickets. Lottie, dotty, everybody. Nobody gets by without a ticket. Is that for me? Thank you. Three for Philadelphia? One, two, three. Ha, ha, ha. Steve Fritter is typical, unfazed by a full train of 380 passengers. When I first came over here three and a half years ago, we had uh, three cars on this train, and now we're running six every day. In the east, Amtrak's problem is not lack of passengers, but of locomotives and coaches to serve them. Ed Connolly supervises breakfast from the cafe car. We carry more people between New York and Washington, D.C. than all airlines combined. Kelly Young, who boarded at Lee Hall, is a teenager who loves the train. Um, leisurely, it's comfortable. It's not too busy. Her traveling companion is an exchange yes, student. Because my father works uh, in the rail business in Germany, and so I have not to pay very much. For <laughs> Newport News to Richmond on Amtrak cost $11. Richmond, Virginia. Richmond. Any passengers for Richmond, Virginia? Hampton Roads to Richmond by Amtrak. About an hour and a half and two time zones. Yesterday and tomorrow on the railroads. The uh, top speed on this particular railroad is 70 miles an hour. S.I. Cottrell is the new breed of engineer. He drove freights for 15 years. 
And running a passenger train is more akin to uh, uh, driving a sports car as, as opposed to an engineer on a freight train is, is, would be uh, like a tractor trailer. In the cab, the 50-minute run to Fredericksburg is like a sports car ride. That may hold the future for rail passenger service. Make it fun and make it fast. From the train they call the Colonial, Bob West reporting. It's one of the most popular railroads in America. It stops in three countries. Where are we? This is a clue to where we are. Two-thirds scale, two trains, 10 coaches, nearly two million passengers a year. This is the Bush Gardens People Train. a chance for someone who's never ridden a train before to ride. We also have a lot of uh, what we call train buffs who come to the park to ride and, and, and enjoy the train as well. As ride operations manager, you might call Mark Paul's train master of the Bush Gardens Railway, one of the country's busiest. We carry about 350 people per train, and uh, we run from anywhere from 10 in the morning till 12 midnight. The blue train is a British replica. The red train, a two-thirds scale model from the Prussian State Railway. Actually, it's a live steam locomotive powered by our propane fuel instead of wood or coal. Murray Wilson works for the U.S. Space Program. He is a weekend railroad buff. I'm fulfilling my lifelong desire to be a locomotive engineer. Have you always wanted to be a train man? No, sir. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Lionel, American flyer. <laughs> that was it, huh? That was it. Now John Pemmer loves it. Seeing the children smile, seeing the old folks reminisce sometimes. It'll be my pleasure to guide you along our way to the Tweedside Station located in Heatherdale. This railroad covers all of Europe in a mile and a half. The kids said, oh, we want to go on that. As soon as they saw it, they wanted to go on it and see it. Because while you're riding them, you can see different stuff. Three months. Three months old. Very first ride. <laughs> chee, 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 chee. We have green light. Highball. This may be the closest to real railroading any of us ever get, but we can dream, even the engineer. We're hauling five coaches who are capable of hauling 300 people, but sometimes I, don't, I can daydream and think that's 50 cars of coal back there, too. So. 50 cars of coal. Now that's a real railroad fan. Riding America's most popular trains from Williamsburg, Virginia. Bob West reporting. Hampton Roads is the busiest coal port in the world. The coal gets here by train. 180 car coal jacks block intersections and slow motorists. But as drivers complain, the railroading of this coal is only beginning. As many as eight trains a day crawl into the Norfolk Southern Terminal at Lambert's Point. 130 miles of classification track covering 400 acres. We have yard crews uh, block the coal or switch it, if you will, and set it over to what we call our Barney Yard. Jeff Gates explains Barney is from an Irish word meaning to shove up a hill. Railroaders call the hill a hump, and it is the secret of quiet efficiency. It's all done without what you and I thought made railroads run. Once the car is at the Barney Yard, you no longer see any locomotives, and everything is done by gravity. Road 11, 11 10, road 11. 34-year veteran Walter Bright is foreman. No engine to conduce on this yard. The yard is agreed to a level where any car but a free road on down to the, to the ship, to the bonnet pit. What impresses you at this yard without an engine is how quiet it is. 1,600 cars a day and hardly a sound. The quiet is broken occasionally at the clasp retarder as automation slows down cars headed for the rotary dumpers 
that turn them upside down two at a time and dump the coal onto underground conveyors. On the pier, machinery called movable loaders fill the holes of ships like this one bound for Turkey. Piermaster Terry Bruce explains it's done exactly the way the captain wants it. A plan that he's given us to load in certain holes to keep the stress on the vessels correct. Correct may be the descriptive word for a coal loading terminal, precise, automatic, controlled. But underneath it all beats the heart of a railroad system that continues into a third century of doing the heavy work in Hampton Roads, the area, and the nation. There still is a romance with the rails. From Lambert's Point, Bob West reporting.